Welcome to my review of Nino Kumi. So I've spent the weekend playing Nino Kumi. I've got about 25 hours in so far. Had a very very boring gaming weekend. Uh, the game itself is actually very beautiful. It's a masterpiece in that sense. But then again, it's Studio Ghibli. You wouldn't expect anything less from them. Uh, the gameplay itself isn't that bad. Um, it's a mixture between Final Fantasy and the Tao series. And possibly a mix between Pokemon and Jade Cocoon. If anyone's ever played Jade Cocoon, it's a very good game. Camera app at the same time as Pokemon. Um... I have to agree with most of the reviews giving it between 9.4 and 9.6 because there are a few downsides to the game. The major one being the puzzles. The puzzles are very weird in the sense that they expect you to understand how the puzzle works straight away without giving you any hints and then once you are given a hint they expect you to still figure out from the hint. So you're actually getting a riddle in a puzzle, uh, especially the third trial when you come to it later on just after you've gotten to Summersville. Uh, there's also one with Horace, who you'll find out later in the game, who gives out spells. And one of the things you have to do is to look in your wizard guide and tell him about the, the alphabet on the, on the top of the page. Uh, so you go to the page, you look for the alphabet, you work it out, spell something very weird like Kimmel or uh, Lakeem or something like that, uh, doesn't work. Okay, so you uh, you ask him again. On the top of the page, again, you have a look, nothing else written there. What it's actually asking you for is the writing on the fabric on the mage's robe, which is at the bottom of the page. Uh, another one is he asks you about the uh, wizard war, which isn't actually described as a name in the book. The only thing I can imagine is you have a picture at the start of the book that looks a bit sort of uh, very Legend of Zelda-esque as they have their sort of montage at the beginning of the game and works out something similar to that and it asks you how many automatons are there in this picture uh, you can't tell because everything's drawn and it looks like a robot to be honest and so you just have to guess a world number and the extra number is 5 there's probably a few more of these to go at the be through the game it's not a bad game either way, it is meant for children so there is some childishness to the game but overall it's quite enjoyable uh, and as I said the probably the worst about this game is its puzzles because they're very unexplanatory some of them you'll get them straight away and it won't be that hard but the other ones where they are hard the game pretty much throws you in the deep and hopes that you'll figure it out because of either bad translations or uh, and the quizzical events. Hello, this is Aldring State reviewing the battle system for Nino Kumi. I'll be using a mage style monster first. But during the game's development, you'll notice that as the monsters grow, you'll get more powerful magic type spells. In this case, it's a fan type water move. It also knows a single target water move. Since this is actually a character basically just used for magic, its physical attacks like all mages are quite weak. Now I will show you a physical style attacker. Mighty is the first familiar you'll get in the game. You're actually given this at the very start. So far I can only get to level 2. I haven't been able to get any of my creatures to level 3 yet. I've just f started the Awesome area, so I'm presuming I'm at least two thirds into the game. Uh, thank you for watching my review of Nino Cuny, and tune in next week when I'll bring you the review of Dead Space 3. Hopefully, I'll have the game completed by the time I do the review so I can give you a full in depth review of the game itself. Thank you for watching.